Oh boy. Oh boy. No, I clicked the wrong thing. Gimp, don't open it up. What is going on, lovely ladies and gentlemen? Y'all know what this is about. Largely because there's a title for you to click on before you even get here that tells you what this is about. But, Marvel. It's Marvel time again. And two, we're being attacked from two different angles right now. They brought back Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Upscaled to 1080p, and I don't think they did anything else. <laughs> and released it on the PS4. And I guess uh, there's an Xbox One and a Steam version coming eventually. And then they announced Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Now, that's the one that we're going to focus on. That's the one we're going to talk about first before we transition into talking about Ultimate. And so the big thing, there is a sort of, you know, obviously there's not a lot to go on. I think we have like three minutes total of footage to look at. They had like, you know, the cinematic um, introduction of the series, which showed off Mega Man X, Ryu, uh, Iron Man, and Captain Marvel. And then they had the little gameplay trailer between those uh, four. And then they had an extended gameplay trailer, which also introduced Captain America and Morgan. So, now I think the biggest surprise in there, like, I don't think anybody is really surprised by Mega Man X because of the utter insanity of the backlash surrounding a Mega Man character in general, just not being a part of Marvel vs. Capcom 3. They got shit on for that. And then on top of that, you also had the entire fan base feeling super trolled in Street Fighter Cross Tekken when they did give you Mega Man, but it was box art Mega Man. Like, ooh, that didn't make people very happy either. So Mega Man X does feel like a very safe choice. Obviously, Ryu and Iron Man, come on. They're basically... It used to be Ryu and Wolverine were kind of the faces of um, the two companies, but now, given that X-Men is basically, like, I mean, obviously Wolverine is still one of the most popular Marvel characters, but he's one of the most popular Marvel characters that whose license is owned by Fox. So, they don't really, that's kind of the big assumption. There's no definitive word one way or the other. Like, Marvel's been getting asked time and time again, are there actually going to be X-Men in this game? And they've been kind of dodging it. Like, not necessarily dodging it, but they haven't definitively stated, yes, we're going to have some X-Men in there. We would not leave out one of our most iconic franchises. Nor have they said, no, Fox can go fuck themselves for continuing to make bad movies with our properties. Assholes. <laughs> the X-Men movies haven't been... I mean, obviously, they've stumbled somewhere along the way, but at least they haven't been the Fantastic Four movies. <sighs> Good times. So, anyway, so let's, let's talk about it. Now... Uh, the big things, the big mechanics that are in the game. 2v2 instead of 3v3. There will not be any assists anymore. Um, let me see, let me see. that. And they will also feature infinity stones that give you different uh, abilities. So it looks like they showed off the power stone and the, and, uh, the time stone. And the power stone looked like when it was active, number one, it gave Ryu an OTG. Um, that I assume would not exist without the power. Like, they they showed it off when he was in the Power Stone, and it was like his standing light kick animation. We don't actually know. That's one of the big things that a lot of people are wondering. Is this going to be a four-button game, or is this going to be a six-button game? And when I say that, when people say that, they mean like... So in Marvel uh, 3, you had light, medium, heavy, and special. And then you had assist one and assist two. In Marvel vs. Capcom 2, you actually had Light Punch, Medium Punch, Heavy Punch, Light Kick, Medium Kick, Heavy Kick. You had all six buttons, and then calling an assist, um, I believe was a combination of those two buttons, right? Or two of those buttons in there, something like that. So, um, that's kind of what people are talking about when they talk about, is this going to be a four-button game, or is it going to be a six-button game? Is it going to be like uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, where it's just Light, Medium, Heavy, Special? something like that or is it going to be a six button game and a lot of people are postulating it's going to be a four button game because they mentioned specifically and i'm going to talk about this a little bit later on but they mentioned specifically in an interview we want pad we want people to not feel like they have to go out and buy a stick to play this game we want pad players to be comfortable and so that's one of the things that a lot of people are assuming is that they're going to make it a four button game so that you only have to use the face buttons you don't have to worry about having to like 
hold your hand in the claw position to appropriately do things like any of that stuff you can just you have the four face buttons so you know who knows again they have not definitively stated one way or another but we will see how that goes so anyway the mechanics 2v2 now a lot of people are like what the fuck this isn't marvel this is marvel this is marvel vs capcom 1 this is marvel superheroes this is marvel vs x or not marvel x-men vs uh street fighter this is how all these games were pre marvel vs capcom 2 it was always 2v2 now granted in marvel vs capcom 1 they had uh you had your 2v2 there was a, there were two separate casts in that game. You had the characters that you could actively use, and then you had assist characters, and you were limited. You couldn't just call in, like, it wasn't just, you know, on a two-second timer or a one-second timer or whatever, where you could call in an assist. You were limited to, like, three or four calls of that assist, period, throughout the entire match. And once you'd spent them, you'd spent them. They were gone. Um... So this isn't new to Marvel. I do think it's a step backwards, and I don't like their justification for it at all, which I'm going to get into once I get into kind of like what they've been saying in some interviews with different uh, companies and whatnot. But, so I don't like it terribly. Now, a lot of people right now are drawing parallels between the Infinity Stones and the 2v2 and the tag-in system that's replaced the assists. A lot of people are just like, this is Street Fighter cross Tekken. And I can see why. I can certainly see why. Um, there are definitely some parallels to be drawn there. It seems like there may be some influencing. Because even the graphics right now actually kind of look like Street Fighter Cross Tekken did. And uh, so I can definitely see why people are drawing parallels. I don't think it's appropriate to you know just be like, oh, this is just going to be another Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Oh, this is just going to be another Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. Um... It definitely, it's going to be unique. It's going to have its own identity. The Infinity Stones have all sorts of potential that we really don't know much about at the moment. Who knows how those are going to affect the game right now. But they're definitely going to have a significantly larger effect than gyms do in Street Fighter Cross Tekken from what I have seen. Um, And so, oh yeah, I didn't even finish my thought about the Power Stone. So with the Power Stone, you had Ryu was able to OTG with like a standing light kick. There's no way they're going to make Ryu's standing light kick be a traditional OTG outside of a special Infinity Gem power-up state. It just looks silly. It shouldn't happen. A move like that should not OTG and allow for an extended combo, that kind of thing. I very highly doubt it. So I, I think that's something the Power Gem does. Um, the Power Gem also caused wall bounce on a bunch of his moves. And so, I mean, that kind of makes sense, right? Like, you're hitting with so much impact that the character's just getting flung, flung around all over the place, slamming off walls, slamming off the ground, you know, ground bounces, wall bounces, all that kind of thing. I like that. Um, seems like a, a good way to improve a character, diversify a character, and give you additional options for a limited time. Now, how much it's going to resemble X-Factor is yet to be seen because it's the power gem, right? Oh, you're going to be hitting harder. Maybe you'll move faster. So uh, hopefully there aren't too many parallels there to because that's one of the... If I could pick any... Actually, no. If I could pick any one thing to just rip out of Marvel, I would actually take out team aerial combos <laughs> before I would take... But that's just because they were bugged and they never bothered to fix them where you could get those infinites. And those are just... I hate team aerial combo infinites, which we're going to get into in time. But so, that's the big discussion point right now is 2v2, whether or not that is a, uh, an indication that perhaps we're not going to have a particularly large cast, because now, I mean, everybody's going to have one less character to choose. That's a big deal. Like, a third of your character uh, selection options just kind of got ripped away, right? So, like, is that going to mean that the cast is reduced overall? Are we only going to get, like, 30 characters instead of 50? Who knows? I personally don't think it really matters all that much. Um, what matters is... So, well, you know what? I'll get into that in a bit. So, no assists. They have confirmed uh, that there will not be any assists in this game. They felt like certain characters were only being picked for their assists, and they didn't like that, and they didn't want that to happen, and so they're replacing it with the Infinity Stones, which are, you know, supposedly just not that important. Now, they're your quote-unquote throwaway assists. And now you can focus on picking characters that you actually want to use and want to play. Now, I hate that. 
I hate I have a quote here. Let me see. The developers the developers felt like having a character selected only as an assist didn't really do someone justice in how they could function in a team. Specifically, it was mentioned that having a character for his slash her OTG assist to help the on point character continue his or her combos didn't really emphasize the teamwork that well. So here's the part that kills me. Having a character selected only as an assist. It's like they're blaming the player for that. Like, it's the player's fault for not learning the ins and outs of the character, for not being effective with the character. They were just picking them for the assist and never even bothered to learn them. Which is horseshit. I don't care. In Marvel 2, I don't care how much time you spent learning and mastering Captain Commando. It doesn't matter. He's still going to suck. I don't care how much time and effort you put in to learning Akuma in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Without X-Factor, he's still going to suck. That's just how it is. You designed them this way, that they are just not good characters in the context of the game that they are in. It's not the fault of the player that they're being picked only as an assist. It's your fucking fault for making it so their assist is the only good fucking part about them. And so that legitimately scares me. It actually really scares me when a designer of a game is completely misrepresenting what the actual issue is. That it's not because the character sucks because you didn't create a good character that could actually compete in a viable manner. It's the player's fault that they're only using the assist and they don't care about the character itself and thus the character's identity is lost. The character's identity was lost when you made them a shit character. <laughs> And so that actually scares me. That actively worries me. And it's where a lot of my... like it's. There was another one in here too. Let me see. Oh, damn. I wrote a big-ass paragraph about that. <laughs> Should I just read this? Fuck it. Uh, well, I mean, it's basically saying the same thing. Let me just read this. I keep seeing... Uh, so there's two main interviews. I'll find the links to them, and I'll, I'll link them in the, my description box so you can read them themselves. Warning, one of them is event hubs. Apparently, you should make damn sure you have ad block enabled because I've heard people have actually gotten, uh, like, potential spyware warnings or, like, you know, some kind of malicious software stuff coming from the ads that are hosted on event hubs. So, uh, and I, I personally, I'm not a fan of it, but for this, it was an interview regarding Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I want to talk about it. Obviously, I want to see it, but I know plenty of people don't like event hubs. And so there is a Game Informer uh, one as well. So check that one out. And it, it, there's, it's not the exact same thing said, but it's mostly the same. The, mo the, uh, the same important things were talked about in both. So if you want to avoid event hubs like the Plague, you're not really missing anything if you only look at the Game Informer one. So I'm seeing interviews cited, Event Hubs and Game Informer, that has Capcom reps saying that they don't like the throwaway assist characters as if that was an intentional player choice and not the fact that they gave some absolutely shit characters amazing assists and that was all they were good for. The reason this is concerning is because it shows a complete naivete regarding the underlying cause and you can't come up with the solution desired by completely misunderstanding the problem. It's not the player's fault that Captain Commando was a completely irrelevant character in MVC2 except for his assist. Akuma's players weren't to blame for his shortcomings. His design made him inherently worthless outside of his assist and X-Factor. They weren't picking these characters solely for the assist and then just not bothering to learn them. They just sucked aside from the assist. It's frightening when people in charge of designing something have no idea how to analyze what they are seeing. I lost it at the end there. So, um, I mean, that's kind of the whole... That's basically exactly what I just said, so I don't know why I just read that. But it is just kind of... I don't know how to feel about it. And that's that, that kind of stuff right there is why I'm just not completely hype over another Marvel vs. Capcom. Because I am seeing these people making design choices based off of bad information, off of bad analysis, and how is that going to affect the game in the long run? It's like, you know, are you going to... If we get this game to come out, and it's as well balanced as all the previous Marvel games, in that it's not balanced at all. And so you have a very clear top tier of, you know the best of the best, and then the rest are just kind of lost in the shuffle, and so you only see about 
10 characters played. Are they going to look at that and say, oh, well, it's not our fault. I guess these people just don't like these characters. And so all those characters that were not designed very well, that couldn't compete at the top level, are they just going to get shuffled off to the side, never to be seen again in a versus game? Or are we actually, are they going to, you know, understand like, oh, I guess we made these characters a little bit too bad. We should analyze that, make sure that doesn't happen again, see why the characters we have are as successful as they are. And then look at the what shortcomings we can potentially make up for in the characters that aren't getting picked. Or again, are they just going to be like, oh no, nobody wants those characters, I guess. So fuck them. We just won't have them again. Because like, look at the look at the cast difference between Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Pretty much every single character that was in both was a great character in 2. One of the sole exceptions being uh, Wolverine. But I mean, come on, he's basically the face of Marvel. You kind of have to include him if you were going to include uh, X-Men. But, like, Cyclops, right? He was a much-desired character. People really wanted that dude in the game. But he's exactly like what they were saying. Oh, people don't care about Cyclops at all. They were only using him for his assist. Because the character sucked aside from the assist. It's not their fault. Um, And so that's a little worrisome that, you know, you're looking at things like that and people are... that are determining how this game is going to play and who's going to be in the game are speaking with information like that. It worries me. It scares me. So anyway, let's move on past that. I've talked about it for far long enough. So, whether how do I feel about there being no assists in this game? I'm, I'm a little sad. I think that they are a definitive part of the series and that they should not have gone the way they went. They shouldn't just be completely eliminated, especially given, again... <laughs> The fact that they're completely just... They don't get it. They don't have a good... They don't have a real reason to remove them. Because the reason they have is complete bullshit. And so, it doesn't. that doesn't sit well with me for that reason alone. Um, I mean, well, you know, we'll see how it works. We'll see how, the, how severely the Infinity Stones actually impact gameplay. And whether or not they do serve as a proper replacement to assists... Or if they just work as a mechanic all on their own. Uh, you know, it's up to Capcom to make that shit work. So we'll see. Let's see, let's see. Okay, so, the graphics. I think this kind of became a bit of a... I haven't really been looking at other people's uh, opinions and whatnot right now. Because I'm trying to keep mine my own for the moment. But I think there was some backlash regarding the graphics. Because I did see a few things like, yo, 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 dude, like, remember, this is super early in development. And I get that. It is incredibly early in the development of the game. It's probably still going to be another year or so. They did say 2017, but number one, have you had a release that actually came out around the time they said it would? I haven't seen a single game that I paid attention to lately not get delayed. Every single one. I mean, obviously, the big ones, Persona 5. Uh, that got delayed by like two fucking years now and it got delayed again it used to be coming out around Valentine's Day and now it's coming out I think like a month later um, The Last Guardian is a fucking huge one <laughs> that got announced at like what Evo 20 or Evo uh, E3 2010 or something like that and then there was just nothing for like four or five years and they finally came up with a little bit of footage look guys we still exist it's finally coming out now, but goddamn, Final Fantasy XV is another example, and like, almost every single game is getting delayed now, so who knows how much development time is actually here, who knows if it's actually going to come out in 2017, we'll see. Um, but I especially think because of how Street Fighter V went for them, how they're still getting backlash for Street Fighter V, that they would be intelligent to make sure that this game is perfect before they release it. <laughs> Again, we'll see whether or not that's the case. We'll see if they've learned their lesson. Like, personally, I don't care. Everything, when Street Fighter V was released, everything that I cared about was in that game. Um, so I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not the person sitting here being like, oh man, where's my arcade mode? Uh, where's a bigger cast? And then, you know, whatever. There, It had problems, certainly. Not gonna deny that. We're not talking about Street Fighter V anyway. I'm just saying... I would think that they wouldn't have learned their lesson from that to make sure that there are no problems 
going into the release of this game. So who knows when it's actually going to come out because... They would be foolish to wind up doing the same thing, even if most of their core audience doesn't care. That casual audience is what makes them money. And uh, especially with a when you're licensing something from a different company, you want your product to make money so you can continue using that license. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, the graphics right now they don't they just they look worse than Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 does. They really do. And we'll see how it develops as time goes on. But it kind of just feels like they were going for a less, like a middle ground between realistic and like cartoon-like. But this is a cartoon, this is from a comic book. It should be heavily stylized in that fashion and it's kind of like they're trying to find a middle ground. And that's no fun. Give me the stylized, please. I beg you. So we'll see how that develops as well, but I'm not really liking the look of it right now. But it doesn't really matter, like I said, incredibly early footage of a game that still has a ton of development to go anything can change and so it's foolish to judge too harshly at this point in time but it's a point that i might be worried about so anyway let's get into the interviews i just wrote down some of the quotes here we went over the assist stuff with any fighting games characters can almost always be arranged in a tier list if the game offers a good enough competitive experience this was another reason why the Infinity Stone system was pushed. So the thing is, the way I'm seeing the Infinity Stones, how they're working right now, these aren't something that's like not going to have any effect whatsoever on the great characters, but the lower tier characters are going to have their abilities buffed up by the presence of these. So all that I'm seeing when they say something like this... Um, actually, did they even... <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, it just it seems like something that's not going to like make it so a character that people don't think is very good suddenly be good. It's just gonna widen the gap that much for like X Factor was. X Factor made some characters that were not viable in any way, shape, or form dangerous. But even though it may have made them dangerous, that still doesn't change the fact that X Factor level three Virgil is the most dangerous goddamn character in the game. And uh, it's kind of so it's kind of the same thing. Like this may be able to cover some of the weaknesses of a character that's been designed, but it's going to widen the gap even further between you know like you take an S tier character and a B tier character. That B tier character isn't suddenly going to be able to compete with the S tier character. They're just going to be able to do it a little bit better, but they're still going to lose most of the time. And so it just kind of feels like it's something that's going to widen the gap between the top tiers and the rest of the game rather than something that's actually going to function as they seem to want it to. And that's just how it is. Like, unless you you go in retroactive and be like, all right, this is everybody that everybody lists in S tier. They can no longer pick an Infinity Stone. <laughs> Which would obviously be ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't really... Again, it just I, I keep seeing them say these things and it just seems like they completely don't get the game that they're designing. Which worries me. Anyway... They also mentioned they are spending a great deal of time to make sure that the game is easy to play with both an arcade stick and a controller. The developers want players to feel like they don't necessarily have to go out and purchase an expensive arcade stick in order to compete at future Capcom Cup events. Has this actually been a thing since like 2010? Because I remember very early on, everybody was like, no, 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 get a stick, get a stick. You need a stick. Everybody that's good has a stick. If you want to be good, you got to get a stick. And then more and more people were like, fuck that, I'm not getting a stick, that shit's expensive, I'm gonna play on pad. You just had a pad player win Capcom Cup 2016, shout out to Knuckle Dude, dude dominated. Fucked everybody up. He was using the pad. So like, why is this even a concern? People have performed fine on pad since they started trying to play on pad. It works. They make it work. Fnatic. Fucking Fnatic was a high level competitor in Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on a pad. On far inferior pads than we have this these days. Why is that a concern? It just... Again, like... How, do, how does that even... Uh, nobody... I, it's pretty much the same. I've seen the same response whenever anybody asks that question anywhere. 
do I need a stick to actually be competitive at this game? No. It makes certain things easier. But no, anything you can do on a stick, you can do on a pad. You have to practice one way or the other. It's just putting in the time. Pure and simple. That's all it is. Just practice. And so again, it just shows this like fundamental misunderstanding of everything. And it scares me. Moving on. Let me see. Combo Fiend is said to be heavily involved in the testing process, which is, you know, kind of just like, oh, we trust Combo Fiend. He's a good dude. We've laughed with him all these years. He's a competitive player, so he's not going to let this go awry. Uh, he probably has no say in most of it. Like, they'll probably take his advice, and they would be very intelligent to take his advice. But the thing is, Combo Fiend is employed by Capcom. He's not going to come out and be like, man, if this came out and I was still a tournament player, I wouldn't play it. His job depends on the effectiveness of his PR. That's what he is. He's the public face of the fighting game side of Capcom. Of course he's going to be like, Ah, oh, man, this is the best game ever. I'm heavily involved. Trust me, this game. You want this game. You want to play this game. If he hates it, he's not going to tell us. That doesn't matter. And so it really does kind of just feel like an attempted deflection of like, don't worry guys, we got Combo Fiend on our side. You guys like him, right? Yeah, cool, moving on. And it just, you know, again, he would not tell us. There's no way that he's going to come out and be like, dude, this Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite shit? Ooh, did they fuck up. <laughs> he's not going to say that. He'll never say that. Unless he wants to get fired. Unless he gets a better job lined up. And he's like, Marvel's Capcom Infinite sucks. I'm out. But that won't happen. It will not happen. So I don't even... It's, yeah. So anyway, this is the point where we basically end Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Damn, I talked about that a lot. But I asked on the Twitters... I said, you know, like, I'm going to be doing a Nate Talks of Marvel. Let me know if you guys have anything you want me to talk about. And I think I'm going to do that from now on for these. Give you guys, like, an opportunity where I just say, like, all right, I'm going to record this tomorrow. You have about 24 hours from now until then to just let me, if you want me to talk about anything regarding this subject, toss shit to me. And so one of you guys tossed me, um, you know, my opinions on the whole 2v2 and no assists. Um, one of you asked me about what characters if i could pick one character from marvel and or capcom who would it be uh i think that was actually it no 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 uh another one of you asked me about touch of death combos which i'm going to get into after this because that was kind of like my segue between marvel vs capcom infinite and ultimate marvel vs capcom 3 so if i could pick because the cast right now is really divisive in marvel vs capcom infinite you have a lot of people who are just like who you know believe that they're only going to focus on the Marvel, or at least for the Marvel side. Like, Capcom side, wide open, up to them. Who knows what they're going to pick. Marvel side, though, they have I believe they've even stated, like, we really want to focus on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. X-Men are not a part of that. Fantastic Four are not a part of that. So a lot of people are postulating, X-Men are not going to be involved in the game whatsoever. Which is going to be interesting, because they are some of the most iconic. Can you imagine a Marvel game without Storm? Whoo! Justin Wong gonna be pissed but we'll see how it goes um and so that is like for me it doesn't really matter like if the game is good I'll find a character to play One, well I say that and that never happened for me with Guilty Gear it kinda did I just didn't feel like investing the amount of time necessary to be good with Chip so that was always my character but there was never another character that kinda like swept me off my feet and was like oh man I have to play this dude it was only Chip and the amount of effort involved to like become good with him was intimidating and so i just never even bothered i was like yeah no nah, i'll spend my time doing other things but i mean that's kind of just my ultimate opinion right now is like they can announce whoever they want i'll find somebody to play i'll find i'll find characters as long as the game is good that's what i care about right now is how is the game going to shape up because if the game sucks i don't care if they put everybody like on my dream list of cast for both sides i won't play it I'm not going to play this game for the characters. I'm playing this game for the game. Um, but if I had to pick on Marvel Gambit, completely free. Like, that dude has been my favorite character since I was, like, six years old. I've loved that dude. He's my favorite X-Men character. He's my favorite Marvel character. 
But, again, they're probably not going to have X-Men. So what I would like to see... Because I mentioned before, I really like the kind of, like, up-close, brawler, kind of berserker-style fighters. Wolverine, you know, is obviously a very clear example of the kind of um, character I tend to gravitate to in terms of, like, their fighting style. And so what I would like... So because, you know... X-Men probably aren't going to happen now that I think about this. This is a Spider-Man character I'm about to say, and Spider-Man is kind of, sort of... That's a little up in the air, because, like, don't they own... Does, is Spider-Man reverted back to Marvel now? Because he was in the Avengers, and I think they're doing a Spider-Man movie, and, like, I don't... I don't know how that works anymore, because it used to be owned by Fox. But then I guess the Amazing Spider-Man series kind of just, yeah, petered out. The second one, a lot of people are very negative toward it. So I don't know what's happening there. But anyway, a Spider-Man character. I want to see a very just like maximum brutality, completely insane, maniacal version of Carnage. Just a completely like out of his mind, psychotic rendition of that character. Who just goes in and mauls. That would be my number one pick for Marvel. If I can't have an X-Men. For Capcom. A certain... I'm no, I can't think of anything that's actually done it well. But... Like a weapon switching, kind of like... Or stance changing kind of a thing, kind of a character. That can... Have like different modes of operation that kind of change up how you play them on the fly. Which essentially means you have like multiple characters rolled into one, which is really, really hard to balance. But having that kind of fluidity in his in the gameplay available is really appealing to me. And so if I had to pick, I would want to pick a character from Ani. I would want Samano Suke from Ani from the Animusha series. And then you know, because in that game, you have different weapons that uh, have different elemental types assigned to them. And I, I love that game. When I was that was one of the first. Like, I think that was the first next-generation Capcom game I ever played was Onimusha. Love that game. Um, but yeah, so if I had to choose, it would be a rendition. I mean, even if it was just that character who only had one weapon type available to him, I'd be perfectly fine with that. I would prefer to be able to, like, weapon swap and have, you know, different elemental attributes based on which weapon you have equipped, that whole kind of thing that's in my head. Like, I would love to see that. Uh, but that's a lot of effort to put in. Again, you're basically rolling multiple characters into one, which can easily be either utter shit or incredibly unbalanced. It's very difficult to actually do that well. But the big sticking point is that Samonosuke is a licensed... Like, they used an actor's likeness for the character, which makes it so they actually have to, I believe, pay that actor in order to use the character. Um... And so that kind of makes it very unlikely that he'll actually be used. And so I kind of thought, oh, you know, maybe like a generic Monster Hunter character could do the same kind of weapon swapping. But then I thought like, I mean, sure, obviously everybody loves Monster Hunter. But everybody loves Monster Hunter because they can make the hunter their own. This is their hunter, right? That's not possible with just a generic Monster Hunter character. It's not the same. Um, and so I was kind of like, yeah, you know, that doesn't really seem interesting to me. So if I had to pick a character that's actually plausible, doesn't have all kinds of like legal issues behind it, or just kind of winds up being some generic whatever, would have to be a character from Sengoku Basara, who has never been represented in the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom series. And Shingen Takeda would be my number one pick, but I'd be fine with anybody. Like, that, their entire cast is fucking amazing. Um, or... Kasuga, cause waifus. Everybody need a waifu, man. Everybody should always have one at your side. Always. Anyway, moving on. So those are the, those are the you know obviously it was more than just one, but I kind of wanted to say like this would be my number one pick, and here's why it will never actually be in the game. <laughs> so then here's my actual pick. Um, but yeah. So anyway, touch of death combos. Now. The problem, they've existed in every single Marvel game. Like, Marvel superheroes had infinites in the game. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 had infinites in the game. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 had that DHC uh, glitch thing where, like, it reset the combo scaling, and so it was basically impossible not to kill somebody if you used a proper sequence of t uh, 
um, fucking whatever DHCs, and what am I saying? That's right, right? Like, it's, there's something that just, for some reason, it's not, it doesn't sound right in my head, whatever, anyway. Um, and then in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, people found the Team Aerial combo um, glitch that allowed infinites to be possible. So touch of death combos have been in every single one. And then obviously you have other touch of death combos that aren't involved there, like Zero's uh, Rasengan loops. You have uh, Virgil's sword stuff. He could kill any... Ooh, excuse me. He could kill anybody in the game. Hulk, obviously. I mean, Kane Blue River's entire gameplay style was based around one-touch kills on everybody. Um, and obviously X-Factor made it possible that anybody could one-touch anybody. I don't, I'm not a fan of them in general, and I think I've mentioned this a lot in the actual original, I mean, they became a very real part where people were basically saying, like, if you don't have a team that at any point they can get a touch and you immediately kill off of that touch, you fucked up, you need a better team. That's kind of how the Marvel vs. Capcom 3 outlook was, which wasn't particularly fun. Like, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 had, you know, there were a bunch of really clever, crafty resets, um unreactable in general like there was a lot of guessing involved which i know doesn't sit well with a lot of people but at least you have a chance to get out of this one touch sequence basically whereas with marvel vs capcom 3 once you got touched again you probably should be dead i don't i'm not a fan of them and obviously it would be significantly worse for them to exist in marvel vs capcom infinite um because it's 2v2, so you have one less character. So if you get touched once and you lose a character for it, whoo, boy, that is going to be devastating, especially with, depending on how effective this actual tag-in feature is going to be. Like, if that increases the amount of combo damage you get by, like, let's say 50%, right, because you have another person able to extend a combo and whatever, if it has a big effect on how much damage you can do per combo, losing one character could be crippling. And it could just be game over from there, almost. And that would be a damn shame. That would suck. And that would make, obviously, uh, one-touch kills all the more debilitating. And so I'm not I'm not a fan of them. I, I would be fine if they weren't there. But, like I said, every single Marvel vs. Capcom game has had them to some degree. And they've always been accidental. That's the big thing. They've never been intentional. Nobody ever intended for there to be infinites. Nobody ever intended for there to be, you know, these combo scaling glitches. They were all accidental. And so even if they don't want them, they're probably still... And this happened with Skullgirls too, if you remember. Like, Mike Z intentionally came out and was like, we have this anti-infinite system in place so that you'll just pop... If the game detects an infinite going on, you'll just pop out. Don't worry about it. It's no problem. People, within like two days... People found workarounds to that. People were finding one-touch kills all over the place. The combos were lasting like 40 seconds. It was ridiculous. These types of games somehow just find a way to give you infinites or give you one touch weird one-touch kill ability. And so, like, even if you don't want them, they're going to find a fucking way. I don't know how. It's like a virus you just can't get rid of. They're just going to find a fucking way. But so anyway, let's transition to Ultimate Marvel because I don't have much to say about that one because I haven't done Netplay yet. I have I I did download it. I decided you know fuck it. I mean this is one of my favorite games, uh, favorite fighting games. So let's just let's just do it. Why not? It'll be a nice trip down memory lane at the very least. So apparently it's just it's just an upscale version. There's nothing like they didn't make any improvements to the game. They didn't change anything about the game. It's just an upscale version of the game. It has all DLC unlocked already. Um, but unfortunately, I guess it doesn't have, like, a lot of people were really hoping they would have the Heroes vs. Heralds, uh, colors already unlocked, but unfortunately they don't, and I'm certainly not about to go through that mode again, so that's a little bit unfortunate, but, like, you have all the alternate costumes unlocked, Jill and Shuma are both available, uh, all that good stuff. So, I mean, it's, that's really all it is, it's the PS3 version of Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 ported to the PS4, that's it. And so the worry there is the netcode. Uh, because the Xbox 360 version, it was good. It was... It was good. That's the best thing I can say about it. Like, it wasn't optimal. It didn't have amazing netcode. But as long as you stuck to 5-bar connections 95% of the time, you were good. The connection was fine. It was playable. The PS3 version? 
you can knock that down to like 75% of the time, maybe even less five bars are playable. But the thing is, is that even on Xbox 360, four bar connections were still generally playable. If you play anything that isn't five bar on the PS3 version, you just fucked yourself. There's nothing good about it. There's nothing, it's not playable in any way, shape, or form. You are just going to have a miserable experience. And so if this is just the PS3 version, poured into the PS4, we may have bad times ahead of us when we try to play online. This isn't how it's going to be. Uh, so yeah, because I did watch um, after Capcom Cup, because that was obviously when it was all, all announced. You're like, oh, well actually it was announced at the PlayStation Experience, but they reiterated through it during Capcom Cup that Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was going to be released for the PS4. And Marvel, here's Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite stuff. And so Flo did a Marvel vs. Capcom 3 stream uh, after Capcom Cup was over. And so I watched some of that. And now the connections he was in, some of them were truly horrible. But he was also saying yes to like three bar connections or four bar connections, stuff like that. And you also have to be very wary when a streamer is playing something online. Because they're not using the full force of their internet to actually, you know, focus on the game. They're using a portion of their uh, bandwidth in order to stream. And so, who knows, maybe if they weren't streaming, that connection would have been flawless. It would have been fine. But because they were streaming, just enough uh, strength was taken away from their connection that now it turns it into something bad. Now it, become, now it becomes kind of spotty and it can't keep up in places when too much is going on. It's a bit, it's hard to judge when it's a streamer that's doing that. So who knows? You know, maybe it could have been like the greatest fucking thing ever if he were not streaming. Um, but it does, I mean, I've seen conflicting reports. You know, basically it's just, as far as I'm aware, it's the PS3 version. And it never had particularly good netcode. It was playable, but it wasn't really enjoyable, if that makes sense. So I'm a little worried about that. But I do, I do want to start playing it again because I always told myself if I got back into Marvel, I would go away from like my quote unquote consistent team so like the team that I picked the most the team that I pretty much only picked in tournament was Nova Spencer Hawkeye that was it and I told myself I would not pick this team again I would pick the characters that I really wanted to play so I did play it a little bit just to kind of re-familiarize myself with the controls and with how it's played and all that and the team that I wound up picking was uh Felicia x23 Strider I don't know if that's actually a good team uh because I feel like I'm kind of missing a solid pressure assist if that makes sense like I don't really have anything that can just come out and uh, allow me to get back in after a block string or anything like that it's kind of just like Vaj was good but it's slow um, but the big thing is that both of those characters benefit greatly from Vajra because if it knocks down they both have really solid OTGs that they can follow up but anyway so um I am interested to play it again, and hopefully the experience is not just completely god-awful and I can stick with it and just have fun with it again. That's that's the big thing. I want to have fun. So let me see. Is there anything else? Yeah, so the, the big worry is really how long it'll last. Because I drifted away from... Well, actually, I stopped playing it initially because my Xbox 360 died. And then I bought the PS3 version, and it just it wasn't very good. But then my PS3 stick broke. And then I was just like, alright, I'm just gonna bail out right now. <laughs> this just isn't even worth it anymore. Fuck it. Um, and so then I kind of just drifted away. But a big reason why I allowed that to happen, why I didn't keep going to like casual offline stuff and, you know, things like that, is because the high level of the game just developed into a place I didn't really care for. Team Aerial Combo, Infinite's all over the place. Virgil, Doom, everywhere. Like, that kind of thing. And I was just kind of like, ah, you know, whatever. I'm not really... It's getting kind of boring. It's getting kind of simple. You're not seeing all the diversity you would like to see out of a huge cast like this. So I'm just going to kind of dodge out of here and, you know, let the game go. And so did a lot of other people. So who knows how long this is actually going to last before people start remembering, oh, that's right, that's why I stopped playing this game. All right, well, I'm going to stop playing this game again. So on and so forth. But hopefully we get some good times out of it. Who knows? So thank you for watching. Watching. Thank you for listening. As mentioned, from now on, I think I will be kind of just giving you guys a day. I'll put a little thing on Twitter that you can respond to. If you have any questions regarding the subject, I intend to talk about. So, if you have not yet done so, but you might be interested in contributing to hearing me talk about shit, please follow me on Twitter. And that's about it. 
All right. Thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you all next time. Peace.